When you develop an application, you often end up having multiple different serverless microservices. Managing all of these services and the dependencies between them can actually become quite a pain. Luckily for us, Serverless has just come out with Serverless Compose. This is a brand new feature which allows you to create a single config file at the root of your application and that then defines the different microservices that you're going to use. It also comes with the functionality of being able to easily export and import parameters between each of your projects. Finally, it also allows you to deploy your whole application with a single serverless deploy command. If you do learn anything new in this video, make sure to smash that like button as it really helps suggest this video to more developers just like yourselves. In the code, we can now see that I have set up a example repo called serverless compose test which contains three different services and a serverless compose.ts file. This was super simple to set up. I created the repo and then run serverless create three times with the same template to create the three services. I then created this serverless compose.ts and started out just having three objects like this, defining the service, and then the path to access that actual service. Once I had that, I needed to work out what variables I was passing from one to the other. So I started with the infra or infrastructure service. In here, it does a couple of things. It creates two S3 buckets. It creates a dynamo table and a cognito user pool. These are gonna then be needed in the other projects, so I decided to export them. I export the region as well because I want all of these services to, to be deployed in the same region. I then also had a website bucket and an asset bucket which I export as outputs. For the first four of these, I'm just referencing directly a custom variable or a variable defined in serverless. So you can do it just using the same reference syntax as you would expect. The last thing is the Cognito user pool ARN. And with this, the value, instead of being just a string, I'm actually using cloud formation uh, functions. So it's using get attribute to get the ARN of the Cognito user pool. Now that we are exporting all of those, we can go back to our serverless compose and look at our backend and actually pass in some parameters. So here we're passing in the parameters of region, which comes from infra.region. So anytime you export an output from a service, you can then access that with the name of the service dot whatever your output name was. So I have infra region, infra asset bucket, infra configuration table, and infra cognito user pool ARN. These are all passed into the backend. So if we now open up the backend serverless file and go to serverless.ts, we can see where these are used. If we go to our environment section in our provider, we can see where two of these are used. The configuration table and the asset bucket name are passed in using param colon and then whatever parameter was passed in. So in the Lambda, I'm going to have access to the DynamoDB table name as well as the asset bucket. Another thing I've also done is set the region to be the parameter dot region. Now, if you are using TypeScript, it will throw an error because it's expecting an explicit string of the region name, not a variable like this. So all you need to do is say that you expect an error on this line, but this is something I hope that serverless will clean up in their TypeScript definitions at some point soon. So now that we have these two, we can actually look at our functions. So the way I do it is have I have a folder where I contain all of my logic for functions, 
So if we jump into there, we can see I have two functions, a save config and a get config. And on both of these, because they are HTTP, I can add an authorizer. Because this authorizer is common, I've added it to the top of the file. And it's just a name, a type, and then an ARN. But here, I have used the param colon cognita user pool ARN. So that is going to be passed in from the infrastructure branch into this service, and then I can use it here. This is one of the things I really like about TypeScript is how you can split this out into its own file really easily and do things like defining the authorizer once and then using it twice. So now that we have that set up, we can actually look back in our serverless.ts and if we go down to the bottom, we want to output one more thing. So this is gonna be the API URL, which we are exporting so that we can use it in the front end. As we did in the first uh, service, our infrastructure service, we're gonna be using a CloudFormation function. So this is gonna be fn.join. And what that does is it joins a series of different strings so this actually ends up generating our full API Gateway URL. We need to do this because the API Gateway REST API value here isn't known at the time you actually build your serverless file. This is generated by API Gateway when you create the new API. Once this is all put together and we export that, we can now look back into our serverless compose. If we minimize the backend one, we can have a look at the front end parameters. Again, there is a region, website bucket, asset bucket, and cognito user pool ARN. So the cognito user pool will be used for using Amplify to add login and authentication to our front end. The website bucket is where we're gonna host it and we'll see how we can use S3 sync with this parameter. And then we have our API URL. As you can see here, it is backend.api URL because this one is coming from the backend whilst the other variables are all coming from the infrastructure service. One other thing to note is the fact that I have a depends on at the end of some of these services. So here it says the backend service depends on the infrastructure. That means this service won't start building until the infrastructure one has completed. And with the front end one, it won't start building until infrastructure and backend have both completed. If you had another service that only depended on infrastructure, then it would deploy both the backend and that other service at the same time, as they both only require the infrastructure service to have been deployed. So let's jump into our front end service and see how we use some of these. So in the front end serverless.ts, we have again the region set to be pram.region. And then if we scroll down, I have two plugins installed. One is the serverless scriptable, which allows me to run an NPM script anytime that I run a deployment. So what this does is it actually builds the React app by changing into the React app code, running NPM run build, and then CDing back out. Now that that app has been built, we want to sync that up to S3. So using S3 sync, I sync that react app forward slash build into the bucket name of param colon website bucket, which is gonna come from our infrastructure branch. This means that I can run SLS deploy once in our root serverless compose. So I'm in there now in my terminal and I can run SLS deploy. I have actually done this already. So the deployment will be much quicker as it's actually gonna skip most of the deployments, but it deploys the infrastructure service first, 
Then it deploys the backend service. And once the backend has finished deploying, it will then deploy the front end service, passing those variables from one service to the next. One thing you can do is you can press the question mark. And what that will do is that will give you more detailed logs as you would expect to see from each service instead of just the individual loader. This is really useful if there is, for example, an issue in one of the services. You can use this to see exactly what is going wrong so that you can resolve it nice and simply. What's also interesting is you can actually see what command the serverless framework is running behind the scenes. So here it's running serverless deploy, passing in a stage, and then a series of parameters, including the ARN of the user pool and the API URL. So that has now finished deploying and we've deployed all three services with a single function. This is great, but it did take over a minute and that's when the infrastructure and front end hadn't changed, so didn't need to be redeployed. But what happens if you want to, for example, deploy just one single Lambda? You don't wanna to have to wait a minute between every deployment. So let's say, for example, if we go into our backend code, find our source functions and get config, and in here, what I want to do is I want to add a console.log of got ID and then the ID. So now that I have that added, I want to deploy just this function. So what I can do is I can actually use a serverless deploy function command, passing in the dash dash service backend and then the function name, which is going to be get config. And when I do this, it's going to check that this Lambda has changed. So, and it deploys that code. And as you can see, that was maybe two seconds. If you wanted to get the logs for this function, now that you've updated it, you can use a very similar request, but just doing serverless logs, passing in the service name and the function name, to get a stream of the logs. One extra thing I do want to point out is something I've not yet figured out. That is if we close this and go back to our serverless.ts inside our front end service, it would be great if we were able to pass in an environment variable just like this, pointing at param.api URL, because this would mean that the API would be automatically embedded into the front end and if we changed the URL or if we deployed all of these stacks to a different region or a different AWS account, then the React App API URL would be automatically put into our React App, which would obviously mean that it would point at the API associated with all these stacks. Unfortunately, in my testing, I wasn't able to get this working I suspect it's something to do with the scriptable plugin that I'm using and not the core serverless functionality. But if anyone can get this working, then let me know in the comments below as it'd be really cool and would just be the icing on the cake for this automated deployment of a whole application. In this video, we've learned about using serverless compose and how we can use it to create a repo that contains multiple services. These services can communicate by exporting and importing parameters. There are a couple of places I think this is gonna be super useful. The first is in CICD pipelines, where before you would have to change directory into each service and run an SLS deploy before moving into the next one. You now no longer need to do that you just run a single serverless deploy command at the root folder and all of your services are deployed. The next is when you've got multiple services that are passing a lot of data between them. We've seen some relatively simple examples of how we can pass things like bucket names, Dynamo table names and Cognito ARNs around, but there's loads more you could pass around 
and using the serverless compose makes that super simple. If you have liked this video, why don't you check out this one, where we compare different infrastructure as code services for deploying to AWS and serverless.